We really want people to come and learn that women have been a part of the game really since the beginning and continue to be a part of the game today. In the 1990s, 1,300 women tried out for the Colorado Silver Bullets, the first all-female professional baseball team in 40 years. 24 were chosen. In 1994, they hit the field. They were managed by Hall of Famer Phil Necro, and each year got better and better and better. They went out and played against men. They played the game extremely well. Three years later, the silver bullets folded, but the diamond dreams did not. But I still have my dream, that's to play professional baseball. 22-year-old Isla Borders became the first woman to pitch for a men's minor league team in 1997. Isla Borders played uh, college ball out in California. Her dream was to be a major league baseball player. Women have always been a part of the game because women insisted on being a part of the game. After the Civil War, women couldn't vote, but they could play ball. In up to 30 pounds of long sleeves, high-necked blouses, layered skirts, and high-button shoes. The first girls of summer who were paid to play took the field in the 1870s. Organized by men, they entertained the crowds with bad baseball. Later on, the women began barnstorming across the United States, playing uh, other women's teams, but also sometimes playing men's teams. Um, that was in the 1880s and 90s. Into the 20th century, women's barnstorming teams called Bloomer Girls offered jobs, travel, and adventure for young women who could hit, field, slide, or catch. Beginning in 1907, 17-year-old Alta Weiss pitched her way through medical school using intelligence and a hard fastball. A star pitcher on a men's team in Ohio, she was one of the biggest box office draws in the Midwest. In 1922, Edith Houghton was only 10 years old when she became the shortstop for the Philadelphia Bobbies. The team's name referred to their bobbed hair. The kid was so small that she had to punch new holes in her belt and tighten her cap with a safety pin. During World War II, women's baseball reached a high point. Nearly 600 women played professional baseball in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. Phil Wrigley of the Chicago Cubs and Wrigley Chewing Gum fame uh, recognized that World War II might put a real crimp in men's baseball and thought that perhaps a market might be around for women to play the game. And so he started up the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. In 1948, almost one million fans paid to watch the All-American Girls, who were positioned by their promoters as both athletic and ladylike. The statue that we unveiled on Mother's Day of one of the players in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League honors all women in baseball. Even the youngest women, like the Pawtucket Rhode Island Slaterettes, the longest running girls league in the country, and 12-year-old Maria Pepe of Hoboken, New Jersey, who made the boys' team in 1972, but was forced off by the National Little League No Girls Allowed rule. Her court case opened Little League to girls. Katie Brownell pitched what we have termed the perfect, perfect game. The only girl in her entire Little League in Western New York, Katie Brownell, made baseball history in 2005. She struck out every single batter that she faced, and she never even went to a three-ball count on any of them. And when I see youngsters playing, Little Leagues, Pony Leagues, American Legion, I stop and watch them play. I love to watch a baseball game. I try to tell them, follow the rules of the game, then you're going to be following the rules of life.